Berkat Yahweh, Berkat Yahweh Shai, Kol Haloyim La Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Barachah Kodash, which means all praises to Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father. Bahasham means in the name. Yahweh Shai is the name of His only begotten Son, who the world ignorantly called Jesus Christ. Barachah Kodash means in the Holy Spirit, Spirit of Truth, on way you can worship the Father and the Son. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers who are preaching the gospel and truth and the sincerity, always in charity. It's Brother Mathati from the Great Millstone Camp, the branch on Des Moines. And I'm um, not sure what I'm entitled to this lesson just yet, but uh, it's pretty much based off or based around the word uh, blasphemy. As you can see here, I got this account here in Mark, the third chapter, the 28th verse. And um, we just start here. It says, Verily I say unto you, all sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men and blasphemies wherewith soever they shall blaspheme. So let's start there. I'm going to deal with that first precept. It says all sin shall be given unto the sons of men. All right. Now, who is the sons of men here? Is this talking about Esau? Well, Esau wasn't given the law. Is it talking about Moab or Ammon? They wasn't given the law. According to the book of. Um, first John three. We understand this. This first John. Three and four. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law for sin is the transgression of the law. <laughs> you see. So going back here in Mark three and twenty eight, all sins, all breaking of the law can be forgiven. Who was the law given to? Let's go to the book of Psalms. 147 19 and 20 it says he showeth his word unto jacob his statutes and his judgments unto israel he have not dealt so with any nation and as for his judgments they have not known them praise ye yahweh bahasham yahweh shah right so going back to this mark 3 and 28 all sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men and blasphemies wherewith soever they shall blaspheme so you might say well hold on you got Israelites that can blaspheme? Yeah, yes, you do. Well, you have a perfect example of a man that used to be a blasphemer. In the Apostle Paul. This is 1 Timothy 1 and 13. I'll start at 11. 1 Timothy 1 11, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed power, which was committed to my trust. And I thank Hamashiach Yahweh our Lord, who hath enabled me for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer. When you go into that word, blasphemous, speaking evil, slanderous, reproachful, railing, abusive. <laughs> you see. And what did Yahweh Shah tell Paul when he was persecuting the church? Why? Why persecutest thou me? Why kickest against the pricks? Right. So Paul was speaking against, let's, let, let, let's get this in the book of Luke, Luke 12 and 10. And whosoever shall speak a word against the son of man, it shall be forgiven him. You see? So Paul was what? Speaking against the son of man. And it was forgiven him. And that's what the, uh, the wicked scribes and Pharisees were doing. Here we have an example of, uh, Let's see. We have exam uh, an example of that. Let's see here. Hold that. Let's get the book of Acts. What is that? Um, Is it 13? This is the book of Acts, chapter 13. And so like it, bear with me. Yep. Verse 44. And the next Sabbath, they came almost the whole city together to hear the word of the heavenly father. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. <laughs> right. But if those men were to repent. Those blasphemous words that they were speaking against Paul. Right? Would be forgiven. You see? 
So we have an example of Paul being a blasphemer, persecuting the church. Right. Just like what those wicked scribes and Pharisees were doing. Which Israel was doing that. Let's let's get example. Because during the time of Yahweh Shah, those are the same men who are in the wilderness. Matter of fact, let's start here. It's the book of second edges one. And straight to the point, verse 22. Thus said the Almighty Lord, when ye were in the wilderness, in the river of the Amorites, being a thirst and blaspheming my name, which goes into the law. Within the law, it tells us, this is Leviticus 24. If I'm not mistaken, is it Leviticus 24? Yep. This Leviticus, the 24th chapter. In the 16th verse. It says, and he that blasphemeth the name of the Lord, he shall surely be put to death and all the congregation shall surely stone him as well as stranger as he that is born in a land when he blasphemed in the name of the Lord shall be put to death. You see, but once again, this is a, a, a law. That was given to Israel that what that can be forgiven according to that mark, but let's. um. I'm sorry, let's go back to the address. Second address 1 and 22 again. Thus saith the Almighty Lord, when ye were in the wilderness in the river of the Amorites, being a thirst and blaspheming my name, I gave you not fire for your blasphemies, but cast a tree in the water and made the river sweet. You see? Another example of, of, of Israel, right? Committing blasphemy. Hey, but also those same men, what did the Lord say in the book of Numbers? What is that? Is that Numbers 24? Salakia. This is the book of, um, I want to say it's Numbers. Or it could be Deuteronomy. <laughs> Salakia, bear with me. Oh, I tell you. Hmm. Let's see if I can find it this way. <laughs> Might be the third chapter. Yep, let's see. Man, the Lord promised that they shall not see it. Um, how's that, man? Gotta be numbers of Deuteronomy. Who the water y'all by Shemiel Shah? This is the book of Numbers 14. And I started 21. But as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles, which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, and have tempted me now these ten times, and have not hearkened to my voice. Surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto their fathers, neither shall any of them that provoked me see it. Now, there was a reason I went here, right? When you get this word provoked, as you can see here is the Hebrew word na'ataza. It says to spurn, contemn, despise, abhor. But when you go down here to the strongest definition, what's one of the definitions? Blaspheme. <laughs> you see that? Blaspheme. So none of those guys that blaspheme the Lord would enter into the land now this is this is spiritual because these men came back in their generations as the what the wicked scribes pharisees the jews that denied our lord yahweh Shah, and they were in the land so what was the lord saying let's get the book of hebrews see the, the lord is not a man that he should lie man let's go back to hebrews 4 
And let's get a. Let's start at six. It says, let's start at four. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and the Most High did rest the seventh day from all his work. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest, the rest starts with this word, which is why what? Which is why two thirds of our people here in America, the rebels around the world, they can't get this word. See, the Lord prophecy has to be fulfilled. According to Isaiah, the sixth chapter, there is an angel that's that's that, that's blocking that's blocking the uh, the minds of these guys from receiving it. Matthew, the 13th chapter is given unto you to know the kingdom of heaven, but unto them it is not given. You see, this is all set up according to what the will of the Lord. But let's keep reading this. It says in this it says in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest and also what the first go round. That's why they have to die here in America and be born back into the kingdom of heaven, right? Which, Lord's will, I'm going to go into further within this lesson. Verse 6, seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached enter not in because of unbelief. Again, he limited a certain day, saying in David, today after so long a time, as it is said, today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? <laughs> you see, there remaineth therefore a rest to the people of the most high man that he promised those that provoked him, those that blasphemed him shall not enter into. And it's starting with what they that are weary rest with us as it is written in second Thessalonians, the first chapter, it starts with this knowledge, man. That's why they can't get it. And that's why they're going to have to die here in America and be born back into the kingdom of heaven. But like I said, once again, Lord, we're going to get further into that. Now here it says, neither shall any of them that provoked me see it. Well, from there, let's go to, uh, matter of fact, I'll do it like this. What was that? Uh, 5006. Let's see. Yep. Cor, Abraham, and Dathan blasphemed the Lord by coming up against Moses. See, Pro have provoked the Lord. This is a go in Deuteronomy 31 and 20. For when I shall have brought them into the land, which I swear unto their fathers that flowed with milk and honey, and they shall have eaten and filled themselves in wax and fat, then will they turn unto other gods and serve them and provoke me and break my covenant. And that's beautiful because it's going to line perfectly up with this Ezekiel. This is the book of Ezekiel 20 and 27. And I'm just showing, I'm just going through precepts to show you that Israel blasphemed the Lord, man. The Most High, right? And it's the same thing that they were doing when Yahweh Shah was on the scene. Them denying Yahweh Shah was them, in fact, blaspheming the Heavenly Father, man. But once again, those things were able to be forgiven, right? This is Ezekiel 20. Let's start at 27. It says, Therefore, son of man, speak unto the house of Israel and say unto them, Thus said the Lord, Yahweh Shah, yet in this your fathers have blasphemed me, and that they have committed a trespass against me. <laughs> right? Blaspheme. The Hebrew word uh, gadap, to revile men, to revile, to hack with words. That is revile, blaspheme, reproach. You see? It's like how they were reproaching our Lord Yahweh Shah, just like how they was reproaching in the uh, the Lord in the wilderness. You see. And not only in words, but let's jump over here to Isaiah. This is the book of Isaiah 65. And seven. Your iniquities and the iniquities of your fathers together, saith Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah which have burned incense upon the mountains and blasphemed me upon the hills. Therefore will I measure their formal work into their bosom. Man, you see, 
So serving idols is also uh, blaspheming the heavenly father. <laughs> you see, but once again, those things are able to be forgiven, right? Blaspheme. People were harap, harapa, harap to reproach, blaspheme, defy, <laughs> jeopardize, right? And then when we um, let's see, twenty-seven seventy-eight, right? Twenty-seven seventy-eight. Jeopardy, that's one. Upbraid, you see? Defy. So serving idols is what? In defiance against the Lord, which he looks at as blasphemy. Surely to defy Israel, that's what um Goliath uh, uh, did, which in turn, he was defying what? The living power. You see? Yep, to reproach the living power. Reproach the living power, right? And once again, same Hebrew uh, Hebrew word. And the de one of the definitions is blaspheme. You see? Because when you look up what blaspheme means. Oh, yeah, it's Mark 3 and 28 in other translations. All sin and blasphemy can be forgiven. See? But let's go blasphemy, right? And pious or profane speaking of the most high or sacred things. Blasphemia, a speaking ill, <laughs> you see? Impious speech or slander to speak evil of. Lord just brought us here to die. He just brought us here to do that. That, that, that was blasphemy, man. But once again, those things were able to, to be forgiven. Right? They were reproaching the Lord. See, another definition is reproach. Defy, reproach. Right? But I think I think we got the gist of it. Let's go back to uh Ezekiel. Ezekiel 20 now, verse 28. For when I had brought them into the land for the which I lifted up my hand to give it to them. Then they saw every high hill and all the thick trees and they offered there their sacrifices and there they presented the provocation, provoked the Lord of their offering. There also they made their sweet savor and poured out their drink offerings. Then I said unto them, what is the high place whereunto ye go? And the name thereof is called Bama unto this day. Wherefore say unto the house of Israel, thus saith the Lord power, are ye? Are ye polluted after the manner of your fathers and commit ye whoredom after their abominations? Right. And what does it say in the book of Jeremiah? It's the book of Jeremiah 16. And 10, it says, and it shall come to pass. No, really 11 to point outside of 10. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt show this people all these words and they shall say unto thee, wherefore have the Lord pronounced all this great evil against us? Or what is our iniquity or what is our sin that we have committed against Yahweh our God? Then shall thou say unto them, because your fathers have forsaken me, saith the Lord, and have walked after other gods and have served them and have worshipped them and have forsaken me and have not kept my law. And ye have done worse than your fathers for behold. Ye walk everyone after the imagination of his evil heart, that they may not hearken unto me. Therefore will I cast you out of this land into a land that ye know not, neither ye nor your fathers, and there shall ye serve other gods day and night, where I will sh not show you favor. And that's what the Lord did unto us, man. See, for our blasphemies towards him, he allowed these heathen to blaspheme us. Let's prove that. This is the book of uh, Psalms. 44. Let's start at 9. It says, But thou hast cast off and put us to shame, and goest not forth with our armies. Thou makest us to turn back from the enemy, and they which hate us spoil for themselves. Thou hast given us like sheep appointed for meat, and hast scattered us among the heathen. Thou sellest thy people for naught, and doest not increase thy wealth by their price. Thou makest us a reproach to our neighbors. 
and a scorn and a derision to them that are round about us. Wasn't these all the definitions we was reading in those ones we looked up? Thou makest us a byword among the heathen, a shaking of the head among the people. My confusion is continually before me, and the shame of my face hath covered me. For the voice of him that reproacheth, that was one of the ones we looked up, blaspheme, you see, and blasphemeth, see, that was another one of the ones we looked up, by reason of the enemy and avenger. So because we did such unto the Lord, the Lord allowed these heathen to do such unto us. Right? Which is why we needed our Lord Yahweh Shah. This is why Yahweh Shah came on this earth. John 3 16. For the Lord, so for God, right, as it says verbatim, for Yahweh so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Yahweh Shah. You see? That whosoever shall believe on him shall have eternal life. This is Matthew 1 and 21. And he shall, I'm sorry, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yahweh Shai, for he shall save his people from their sins. So we needed to be redeemed from that. Because all of us are, is guilty of blas blasphemy one way or another, man. And leaning to our own understanding. Uh, worship, uh, you know, uh, celebrating Christmas, Easter, Thanksgiving, so forth and so on, man. Calling on sweet Jesus or or Allah, right? That was all reproachful unto Yahweh by Sham Yahweh Shah, which another word for reproach is blaspheme. You see that? What it says in Acts, it's the book of Acts 5. And 31, him hath the most high exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Going back to that Mark 3, all sin shall be forgiven, right? And it ain't just talking about, you know, uh, like we say, Yahweh Shah's blood only covers the elect on this side because it's the Lord ordained those to believe in him. As it is written in Ephesians, the first chapter, matter of fact, let me get this on deck. Let me get that on deck and let me get Ephesians. Ephesians 1 and 11, in, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Yahweh Shai, in whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation in whom also after that ye believed you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So those elect individuals that the Lord has preordained right to receive salvation is going to hear this word and be sealed through the Holy Spirit. But you have what? A, 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 um, a set number of Israelites who was ordained to condemnation. This is the book of, uh, is it second Peter? First Peter chapter two and seven unto you, therefore, which believe he is precious, but unto them, which be disobedient, the stone, which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed, man. So this is all going according to the Lord's will, because the Lord saw fit to send forth his son, right? So that his blood would cover the elect of Israel, but his uh, sacrifice covered all of Israel. And I hope, you know, that made sense. And let me continue to read so, you know, it can be more clear. This is the book of first John two and one. My little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the father, Yahweh Shahamashiach, the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins, those that believe, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. For all of Israel. Because once again, I made the statement and I said what? I said that his blood only covers 
the elect, right? Well, let's prove that. This is the book of Isaiah. 59 and 20. And the Redeemer, being our Lord Yahweh Shah, shall come to Zion and unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, saith Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah, those that repent. Right? Verse 21. As for me, this is my covenant with them, those that repent, saith Yahweh, my spirit that is upon thee, and my words which I have put in thy mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed's seed, saith Yahweh Basham Yahweh from henceforth and forevermore. So the Lord, according to his will, ordained the elect who first trusted in Yahweh Shah to be delivered, and through them all Israel will be saved. This is the book of um, Romans. 11 because these same these same branches that were broken off we're talking about who those that didn't believe those that were disobedient those that committed those blasphemies man but once again in the kingdom of heaven all those uh uh, uh blasphemies and sins they that they did that they did that they had to die for here on this side would be forgiven in the kingdom of heaven this is the book of romans 11 And 25, for I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And so, so, it, so it's ordained that certain Israelites will be blinded, <laughs> right? And so all Israel shall be saved as it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob, for this is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sake. Yeah, they're enemies of the cross. But as touching the election, as being Israel, they are beloved for the Father's sake, man. So in the kingdom of heaven, they're going to be back, what? In the good graces of the Lord through Yahweh Shah's sacrifice. Jeremiah 31, 34, and they shall teach no, which we know, 31, right? Goes into the, uh, the new covenant he will make with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Well, how is this new covenant established? Through the blood of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, <laughs> right? So those that believe when Yahweh Shai returns will be what? Translated into that new covenant and the children that are born out of out of out of those ones that's delivered will be born under the covenant. Matter of fact, let's hold that there in Jeremiah. Let's get this in Isaiah. Because we just read that uh, the Isaiah 59. What did it say? <laughs> this is my covenant with them. The words and my spirit that's on you and the words will not depart out of the mouth of thy seed nor thy seed seed. But this is the book of Isaiah 60 and 21. Thy people also shall be all righteous. You see, they shall inherit the land forever, the branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. Because that promise is to all the seed of Israel. And the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. The promise he made unto Abraham is going to be fulfilled, man. Through our Lord Yahweh Shai. And those that don't believe, that promise will be fulfilled through those that are delivered through Yahweh Shai. You see? Verse 22 A little one shall become a thousand, and a small one a strong nation. I, Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, will hasten it in his time. So now let's go back. Jeremiah 31 31. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord. That I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which which my covenant they break. Although I was a husband unto them, saith the Lord, 
But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their power and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, No the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. Boom. From the least to the greatest. What did Yahweh Shah say? Oh, these, these goddamn people is annoying. But what did Yahweh Shah say? Matthew 5 and 19. Whosoever therefore shall break one of the least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom. So those who are not obedient unto the words of the Lord in the kingdom of heaven, these things will be written in them and they're going to know the Lord and their sin, what? Will not be remembered. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. You see? So this verse 34 is showing you who the least and greatest is. That what? <laughs> that none of their sins will be remembered. And I will remember their sin no more. This is Satan. It's all good. He ain't finna stop nothing going on here though. So uh let's go back to that. Let's see what else they got. Yep, Hebrews 8 and 12. For I'll be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. And their Hebrews 10 and 17. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more, man. That's all Israel. So therefore, all Israel will be saved, man. There's no way around that, man. Why you got guys talking about uh, you, you hope to see a high priest already. He ain't going to be in the kingdom. You got guys teaching Israel. Certain Israelites going to burn. These niggas ain't got it, man. You know? But once they die here on this side, they're going to be straight in the kingdom of heaven. Because <laughs> this these words I'm saying, it applies to them. So let's go back to Mark 3 and 28. So therefore, let's read this with understanding. Verily I say unto you, all sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men, unto the Israelites, and blasphemies wherewithsoever they shall blaspheme. You see? And once again, we read that in Luke. And whosoever shall, Luke 12 and 10, and whosoever speak a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But unto him that blasphemeth against the Holy Spirit, it shall not be forgiven him. So now let's deal with that part. Let's read this in Matthew uh, 12, and then we're going to jump back to the mark. Matthew 12 and 31, wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh the word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him, but whosoever speaketh against the Holy Spirit, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come, which that world is, uh, nope, nope, I'm sorry. Yeah, I think that world, that word world is eon. But it won't let me, it won't let me look up that word world. But Mark 3. Boy, I'm trying to tell you. Mark 3 and 29. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Spirit hath never forgiveness, but is in danger of what? eternal damnation so that's what it means in the world to come <laughs> you see what is that what is eternal damnation well let's read about a place that has suffered eternal damnation this is the book of jude verse 7 even as sodom and gomorrah in the cities about them in like manner giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. That's eternal damnation. So here it is. The remembrance of Sodom and Gomorrah is even to this day. What it tells us here in the book of wisdom of Solomon. This is the book of wisdom of Solomon 10. 
in verse seven of whose wickedness, even to this day, the wasteland that smoketh is a testimony and plants bearing fruit that never come to ripeness and a standing pillar of salt is a monument of an unbelieving soul. But the point is, is what is that land is what is a witness. It's a testimony. It's a memorial unto this day. Right. So going back into that mark where it says what? It shall be uh, um, in danger, liable, right? When you go into that word danger, right? It goes into liable. Unto what? Unto eternal damnation. Who's going to suffer that eternal damnation? This is the book of Isaiah. 34. I'm going to jump around for sake of time. Verse 5. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven, which is those nuclear missiles. That's another lesson for another time, though. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia, which is talking about here in America. This is the chief place of Edom. And upon the people of my curse to judgment. Now, when you scroll down, it speaks about what? Matter of fact, let's let verse eight. For it is the day of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah's vengeance and the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. And the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch and the dust thereof into brimstone and the land thereof shall become burning pitch. It shall not be quenched day nor night. The smoke thereof shall go up forever, meaning for a, a long time from generation to generation. It shall lie waste. None shall pass through it forever and ever. That's that eternal damnation that's going to be brought upon this place. Why is that? This is the book of uh, Revelation 13 and 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. See, this is what Esau Edom has done, right? Because this is talking about Esau Edom's power structure. Being spearheaded by what? The whore that rides this beast. Let's jump over to the 11th chapter. This is Revelation 11 and 8. And their dead bodies, being Israelites, shall lie in the street of the great city, which is what? America, Idumia, which spiritually is called Sodom in Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified, where our Lord was exed out, man. Where what? He painted himself as the heavenly father. He painted himself as our Lord and Savior. He painted himself as the Israelites. He painted the angels as himself. That's what's not, what's not going to be forgiven, man. <laughs> you know? The wickedness and atrocities that, he's, that he put across. Hey, what, what, what do we say about him? This is the book of Hebrews. This is the book of Hebrews 12. Is it? No, it's not 12. It is not 12. Man, I ain't brought this priest up out in a minute because I don't remember it, but let's get it. I'm mad as hell. I don't remember it. I used to know it off the top of my head. I knew it was Hebrews 12. Oh, my God. It's Hebrews 12 and 16. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance. And uh, the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary will tell you that as well. That all the neighbors of the Israelites, Edom was the only one that was promised no mercy, no favor from the heavenly father, man. After the thousand years of slavery, Esau, Edom is going to be eradicated. All the rest of these nations get to go back into their land and live after all laws, man. And a nigga got a nerve to say, do you read the Bible, nigga? Obviously you don't. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears, man. This is no forgiveness in this world, nor in the world to come. This is what it's speaking about.
Um, Revelation 13, 6. And he opened his mouth and blasphemy against the Most High to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. <laughs> right? And that's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the work in the what? Of the angels, man. The spirit of truth. This is what allows us to speak these words, man. Right? Revelation 17 and 3. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet covered, colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns, man. So this is that eternal damnation. That this place is going to suffer, man. That Esau is going uh, to be subject to. <laughs> you know? So, Lord's will, I hope this was edifying. You know, uh, I was compelled in the spirit, you know, to uh, go into that, man. You know? Did a little um, meditating in the spirit and, you know, going through different precepts. So, Lord will, I hope this was edifying to Wadi Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, for giving me the spirit to do this lesson. I'm going to give all praises and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Brachaha Kodash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers who preach the gospel and truth and the sincerity, always in charity. Once again, Lord will, I hope this was edifying. Shalom.